Welcome to Far Out with Faust. I'm Faust Chicho, and today I'm sitting here with an extraordinary human being. Lama Lenang Rinpoche is a spiritual teacher and a meditation master of the Nyingma lineage, which is the oldest Buddhist tradition. He has studied with and trained with several enlightened masters in Tibet of many different traditions. He embodies the wisdom of Buddha's teachings, and his life's mission is promoting global harmony and world peace through inner peace, which I think is just phenomenal. Welcome to the show, Lama. Thank you so much for being here, man. This is, uh, this is amazing. Okay, me too. I'm very happy to be uh, in with you on this moment. Awesome. <laughs> So let's uh, let's jump right into it. I mean, let's get into a little bit of your background so people understand uh, who you are and where you're coming from. Um, you know, I understand, and I'm, I've only recently learned about uh, Padmasambhava, and he was called the second Buddha. And, um, you know, I, I understand that he was crucial to establishing Buddhism in Tibet. And, and, and can you tell us about how that is part of your lineage? Uh, yes, uh, Tibetan can invite uh, Pamasambawa to Tibet and mm -hmm. uh, and it earliest century and uh, Buddha Dharma uh, start and also they build a uh, Sami monastery. That's the first monastery in Tibet. So, and we call this four first like a first uh, mm -hmm. town, first uh, palace, first uh, king, the first uh, monastery. That was the first monastery establishing. So from and and then uh, later, all other different branches or br different schools of uh, Tibetan Buddha Dharma born from and this school. And this is the kind of the father, or, or you see. Uh, the parents of the Tibetan right. Buddhists. Awesome. How exactly um, did you become uh, uh, Rinpoche? And were, were you recognized as the reincarnation of a spiritual master? Is that what that means? Uh, you see, a Rinpoche means first one. So you can call anybody your master. Um, uh, you can call reincarnated one. So somebody really training to, to become a master. You can call them Rinpoche, it means a person. But you don't call everybody as a Rinpoche. But this is just sort of polite kind of words for somebody. <clears throat> uh, but for me, it was I was nine years old, uh, I was chosen by that uh, crazy great master <laughs> called uh, Mahasiddha or Jinrinzen. So he sees uh, the features, he thinks I'm going to benefit many people. So. And that's the reason I am here today. I'm talking to you. <laughs> awesome. Well, he, I think he, he has good discernment, <laughs> the, the crazy guy. Um, that's awesome. So do you, do you have awareness of, do you know like which spiritual masters you were in your past lives? Is that something that you come to awareness of? No, because why we need to think about past? Past right. is already history. Right. It's very important. We can't think about future either because we don't know next hour. Right. It's only we, who you are, what you do. If you're a special master, you, you have to master's work. What is special master's work is called three training wheels, which is, means the way of meditation, the way of uh, wisdom training to that benefit of the open sentient beings. The will of the uh, the great activity to benefit others. If you are you doing that, you are special master already. And it doesn't matter what you talk about history. Then doesn't really work that way because you see in America don't have good history. It's yeah. only a couple of hundred years old, but uh, and this is great country. Yeah, very very young so country. I always very I always really say to everybody say, don't live in the past because already gone. Why we need the struggles there? We yeah. need this really live in a present moment. The person the moment is the gift. I agree. <laughs> it is it's the it is a gift. I I 
I believe that, and I teach my children that. Um, and and I, you know, I I know this is a very complicated question, but I, I guess if you can, if you can sum it up, you know, what are the, what are Padma Sambhava's core philosophy and teachings? So one day the iron birds fly in the sky, mm. and the stone bridges in the rivers. The east meets west. My teachings goes to the world. So, and uh, nobody understands. They think of some kind of uh, yeah, they just <laughs> uh, iron birds, <laughs> but uh, uh, in the early uh, centuries. So, uh, so he prophesies everything about the what's like the future and everything. So, uh, there's uh, teachings for uh, for everybody. What exactly is the the land of Shambhala, and where is it geographically on, on Earth? right now and like is it in is it on this three-dimensional plane we live in or is it can you talk about that uh you see uh and really that's a way kind of uh not easy to explain so because um uh kind of relatively or like the the scientific but uh, also the capacities of the mind the developments of the meditation uh, you can be in a Shambhala any, anywhere in any time, you see. Mm. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, also there have some people say Shambhala is some kind of own world, different yeah. world, and different dimension. One day we can kind of connect it in there and kind of we bother, and then sort of there's some things going to happen. And some people think it's also on Earth, even though in the inside of the Himalayas. So uh, there's so many things that I, that myself, I think is a Shambhala to me. Any pure realm or any mandala is you can connect to anywhere, any any time. Mm. And when you are a good meditator or understand that philosophy, mm. there's no distance between you and Shambhala. I see. So it's a state. It's everything. It's a state of being. It you know. It there are people who believe it is a physical geographical location on Earth, but it's it's more a state of being that you can you know enter into. Especially you know. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm also a a, a daily meditator. So uh, you know, I, I think I understand exactly what you're talking about. But I didn't realize that was also you know that Shambhala meant all those things. That's so cool. That's awesome to know. Yeah, you can live in Shambhala any time, any, anywhere, and all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's that sounds awesome. I'm gonna tr I'm gonna try harder to to do that. <laughs> um, so let me ask you. Um, I'm I imagine that you've seen some amazing things um, in in Tibet and in, and with the many amazing people you've studied with um, and trained under. So I was wondering, like, you know, what are some of the so, some of the more amazing things that you've witnessed in your time um, with these enlightened masters? And, and, you know, would you would you call it like superpowers? How would you could you describe uh, an account or two? I don't call the superpowers. I will call the natural gift. Hmm. The natural gift is we all have. And which way you want to use your body, speech, and mind. We all have, doesn't matter man or woman, only the matter of your motivation and your joyful effort mm -hmm. to, you can develop in that level. You see, you want to evil, you have the seeds of the evil with you, in mm -hmm. the with you. And you want to enlighten, and then also you have that gift. And what you want, you see many Tibetan great masters, they fly in the sky. And that's, just, uh, you know, their gift. Everybody, if, if you really practice this level, you can. And many great masters reach enlightenment. They have nothing left when they pass into the nirvana. Nothing left in their bodies. Mm -hmm. We call it rainbow body. And today, in that, some masters, like that happens, and um, why I'm saying today is, today is the material world in technology as scientific things take away from we are this natural gift. And that's why people's mind is more spending the 
a television and mm-hmm. news and <laughs> so they don't have a focus so mm-hmm. that's the uh, the issues people have today this world you see mm-hmm. and otherwise uh, everybody has a gift uh, but you wanted to know anything uh, like a sort of uh, sort of this natural gift I sure that, that you maybe witnessed you know in in, in your time uh, yeah, and I, I just uh, kind of struggle with many, but one I can share with you as like um, uh, once uh, my first teacher is called Mahasida, mm-hmm. or we call the crazy yogi. Well, now that in the Western is called crazy yogi, or uh, <laughs> we call Mahasida. Uh, so, <clears throat> and he is a holy man. So my father was his uh, sister, assistant, like uh, helping him to people coming to see him and organize this. And one day, my father said, this mother comes with a little child, like a little, uh, maybe eight, nine years old girl. But she has a tumor in the stomach, was big mm. and skinny. And uh, then this master told the mother, say, lady, close your eye, I just cover your eyes and close your ears, walk away, leave your daughter. And mother did. Then, and he said to the, my father, "Say, can you hold this girl?" And my father was holding. Then he brings his rifle, his gun, and put it into the girl's stomach, and he shot. What? He shot to the the girl. And that moment, my father thinking, "How are you going to explain to the world the holy men killing this little girl?" <gasps> you know, my father was like, "Oh no!" Like yeah. he's he. he He's scared, no? Yeah. But then the, the holy man says, take this girl to put in the bed. And then my father says, okay, but he's, she's dead. She's fell, you know, take her to the, put in the bed. Yeah. And a couple hours she wake up, throw up, diarrhea, and one week she recovered. And the holes in the clothes, but there's no holes in her body. <clears throat> wow. So, so. so uh, that's just only one. There's countless... Uh, gift he has but just only one but and you didn't see also, that though your your father saw that right yeah but it's kind of same because my father told me and my father don't really right. lies or anything just uh, it's kind of myself I see many uh, other but I thought maybe this is more something clear and uh, we know what the guns and stuff yeah and everything so Another thing is one of my teachers, he was my astrologer teacher, and who was, uh, uh, when he passed away, in, the, in his body is nothing left, only hair and fingernails and toenails. Wow, wow. So he, he, he went the way of, I don't, I, I don't know if you saw Star he went Wars. Die, he, he right down and says, this year, this month, this day, this time I'm going to die. You put wow. it in a box, leave in six months, then gathering and open, then maybe you can see something. Wow. Then they did that, and then when they opens, what the, his brother don't want to do that because he said, oh, I'm six months, I'm open, going to be see his bugs falling in his mouth, nose, and I don't want to see this. But then everybody convinced to, to do it. Then six months later, they opens in the box, has hair and nails, fingernails and toenails. Awesome. So we can- call the rainbow body. Can you explain the rainbow body? Um, you know, something like that is called the rainbow body, but there's uh, uh, many different levels of rainbow bodies. But also, as uh, somebody's finished the karma uh, ah. in this world, then they're enlightened and the uh, body, speech, and mind. In those ones can reach rainbow body. I see. <laughs> so it's it's the, the final the final stage before you begin again, I guess. <laughs> it's not a begin, but you accomplish it all. <laughs> I see. I see. So, so you, you've, you've accomplished everything that you and set out. World. Right. Right. Um, that's awesome. So the America that has, the world has right now, um, you know, is, it feels pretty lost to me, you know, in a lot of ways. Um, and, and, you know, I wanted to ask you, what, what is the America that the world needs right now compared to what it's getting? America is this beautiful, uh, gigantic lion in the jungle. Mm-hmm. You see, 
and other animals, they can do nothing because the lions roar. Mm -hmm. All the animals afraid because America has uh, all the uh, military and warfare, everything so perfectly. Mm -hmm. But today what's really going on in America is I see the lion got uh, the uh, illness, uh, which is a kind of um, cancer, you see, mm-hmm. uh, and the lion is sick. So you see, I, did, I don't think other countries do anything much, America, but America self is going down. Mm-hmm. Why? Because America is run by the two parties. You mm-hmm. see the Republicans and Democrats. Yeah. And that is our government. Then you see, they always criticize each other and they <laughs> always fight and no, they're they're yeah. against they blame each other you see nothing they're gets done a, yeah yeah exactly they waste the, the, the tax money and mm-hmm. they waste everybody's time mm-hmm. it's like a big family has a parents the parents always argue and fight and that's really going in America right now it's mm-hmm. they need to stop blame they stop argue really what's need is america need healing and push yeah. it we as americans and what we have and also work together for future generations and i i know i know buddhism believes in reincarnation um can you explain the laws and mechanics of how how that works that's a really i don't need explaining so you can just Click the uh, click in the Google. <laughs> There's many children. They remember the past lives, you know, and uh, even the past, the parents and everybody. So, with them, children, they they become like three or four or five years old. They they remember. Hmm. They used to be in a scientific. Or people don't believe, but now any scientific person you ask, you say, you believe reincarnation. They will say yes, but. They, they don't really practice uh, of the, this philosophy of the, the cause and effect of the karma behind. Only they just sort of kind of, they believe the reincarnation, they know because there's very obvious and there's so many books and there's so many videos, so many children remember. So, so you see, um, in the reincarnation, it's like this. What kind of seeds do you have? So you mm-hmm. seize up medicine, you put to the ground that you have a medicine plant grows up. You have seeds of poison, only poison grows up. And then in, in order to look in, in ourselves, and if we doing something benefit for ourselves to benefit for others with the love and kindness and compassion, that is uh, definitely next life, you have a better life. Mm-hmm. But uh, when what you put in, in that brings, because in this world, it's, we have so much self, selfish and self-centeredness and a me, me, me. And mm-hmm. that brings <clears throat> next life is more, more uh, uh, grasping, more selfish. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> I understand. Um, can you talk about what, what happens to beings when they die? And, and like kind of a, is there a, an understanding you have of the the step by step process from death to rebirth, and and can you explain what what are what the bardos are? In America has a very big problem issue because nobody like to talk about death and dying, and every, nobody don't like to talk about getting old. You see, everybody have to be fit and have to be young and. Uh, you know, <laughs> so everybody have these uh, ideas about the death. It's a so it's a problem. It's a big problem. Yeah, that's why the, they have a very most very difficult time. Yeah. But if you learn and in study, there's no death. Death is a liberation. That's and right. Death is also it's a natural thing. We are born means we die. That's right. So if you live and joyfully. You die peacefully. Mm-hmm. You live hard, not enjoy your life. 
you will die have difficult because oh, I've never enjoyed my mm. life. I didn't finish this, and uh, that's right. Stuck. And then you're going to be doing so it all over very, again. <laughs> yeah, if you want to me say something, I say, enjoy life. Then you're going to de- uh, die peacefully. L- live joyfully, die peacefully. That's uh, simple. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing. I agree wholeheartedly. You know, I I've been talking about talking about it a lot on the podcast with with people and about how we have a completely misunderstanding of the death process, which is just an, another rebirth. You know, and so there's all this fear wrapped up around it, and we make all these decisions based on that fear. And I I just think that one of the things that needs to change in this country you know and and in most countries is our understanding of death because it impedes our lives you know by not having a a, a greater understanding of of this amazing gift that we have called life you know from a buddhist standpoint and i, I love this question do aliens or or extraterrestrials exist and are are do they have an influence on human evolution if we exist and definitely there are other you know, lives and countries and in that another planet and another aliens definitely exist because mm-hmm. uh, relatively, even though I have dream about the, another earth mm-hmm. in right now, you and me talking in there. Oh, yeah. So exactly identical earth. Parallel, so parallel exactly, reality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Parallel. It's like a twin Earth, uh, which is uh, you see um, uh, in in that way already exist in my mind in my dreams, mm-hmm. dream state. Uh, but uh, in in life, everything is a dream. Yes. And our past is no different than your last night's dream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can yeah. do nothing. You see, and our future is also dreaming. Right, right. Because there's only now. So in yeah, in that in that point is the uh, this relatively or uh, this uh, the dream world. Yes, mm-hmm. and there's many uh, spirits in uh, even on many realms and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you think that? Um, some of the spiritual masters we recognize were aliens? Um, I don't call the aliens, but there are reincarnations uh, of enlightened beings, which is called the uh, uh, Bodha and Bodhisattvas. I see. Because they are just, uh, they already accomplished enlightened body, speech, and mind, but they want to benefit for all parents and sentient beings. That's why they're working in this Mm-hmm. But the, those ones, they don't say, oh, I am enlightened, I am special. No, right. because they don't need to say, because they don't have ego. Right. What, so what is your definition of enlightenment? Our radio would just tell you that there have many levels of enlightenment. Yeah. So, but you see some people have enlightened speech, because mm-hmm. any word comes is a wisdom mm-hmm. and teaching. Some people have enlightened the mind. They can connect with the whole universe to benefiting all parents and human beings. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> some uh, masters have enlightened uh, forms, and even though here's too many places mm. at the same time. Yeah. So it's like it's like uh, it's like an intelligence. You know, people are like, "Well, the, the, that person's so smart, but they <clears throat> they do certain things," and I'm like that. Intelligence has so many manifestations. Some people have this amazing intelligence that they're really good and and at some things, and then other things that you know they're not. They don't connect with as well. I feel like that's. Uh, I don't know. That's. I feel like there's a connection to to that because some people are so yeah, enlightened. You know. I, yeah, it's a, sometimes the intelligence is obstacle. You see, if you mm. don't know how to use it. Yeah. But if you use the, and the wisdom with compassion, then benefit for ourselves and others. Mm-hmm. But if you use your intelligence and wisdom with ignorance, only hurt others and hurt ourselves. 
Yeah. We see a lot of that you going just, on. <laughs> yeah, you can just see Mao Zedong or you can see uh, Art Hiller and how many people die. Yeah. In the yeah. war, Iraq war, how many people die? What benefit for Iraqi people or Americans? Nothing. 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 Yeah. It's all. For the intelligence, how we use. Yeah, them. yeah. Only with wrong use brings wrong energy. The yeah. negative brings the negative. The positive brings positive energy. In this world, is everything is relative. Right. I mean, intelligence can be manipulated as well, and wisdom cannot. Wisdom exactly stands on its own. You have to, like, for example, in ordinary life, just like you and me, we talk. What? How do we use ordinary wisdom? Is we we use we had to think, but we had to feel what mm -hmm. we can do and what what we can accomplish, what's comfortable. Mm -hmm. And if we use our heart and head together, then I think it's, life is good. Too much you use the head, then you're going lost. That's right. <laughs> it's a pathway. Crazy. It's it's a pathway to misery. To too too much uh -huh. up here and not not enough down here. You know, and you spend too much time up here, and you start to forget about this intel this level of wisdom and, and intelligence, uh -huh. which is the, I think, the more important of the two. You know, um, yeah, yeah. Who is the goddess Tara, and and what is her connection to you and your teachings? Uh, there's so many ways we can talk about uh, Tara. <laughs> Yeah. And Tara is uh, feminine, we call feminine Buddha, mother of compassion. Mm -hmm. She's uh, the form of Sambonaka Buddha, feminine Buddha. So in connection to me is my first teacher, he told me, he said, just practice Tara and connect with Tara anywhere you go, anywhere mm -hmm. you stay. And you don't need to worry nothing. And then also His Holiness, Dotrip Shinrinpoche, he said, I ask uh, what is best practice and what is can benefit myself or others I can do. And said, he said, oh, just do the Tara practice and Tara meditation. That's it. He said, that's mm. it. You don't need. But also Tara is especially very important in this century. It's called yeah. the 21st century. It's called the feminine century. Mm -hmm. That means in the world we're going to we have many uh, female uh, presidents, female mm -hmm. leaders, uh, feminine uh, energy rise. And in this time, is very good to practice Tara and understand it's not like Tara, some kind of green lady, but <laughs> understand this, you're connected with the, uh, the, <clears throat> the energy anywhere you can use energy. You can uh, stay with the mandala of the Tara. Mm. There on that. You, you know, my spiritual practice really changed when I began to connect to 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 Tara to to the earth and this for the feminine energy that that is coming up um, out out of this amazing planet we live on um, and I feel I, I is that kind of what you're is is that similar to what you're saying is that is that another representation of of, of Tara uh, I, I often like one time this lady asked me she said Lama, how do you think about all many people have cancer and so many people dying with the cancer and these illnesses? Mm -hmm. And my answer is, I said, we are the cancer of the earth. And the earth is our home, our mother. Mm -hmm. And our home is polluted then. And who's going to pollute it? Us. That's because right. This is our home. It's so powerful um, and it's so amazing to hear someone like you speaking of the what we call the the divine feminine and and its importance and how it's been rising and how it's going to continue to rise and i i believe the same thing and um you know i, I believe the world needs it you know which is why of course it's happening uh so that's it's so cool to hear you to hear you talking about it um you know uh but let me let me so my next question is um is about well, it's it, it's about ghosts, you know, what we call ghosts here. Um, and and do do you believe they exist? And um, are, are you know are they are they stuck between dimensions? Is that what's happening with ghosts? 
from your perspective? Our God does exist in with you and me and everyone. And then how we can see and how we can identify. And the nice person suddenly upset they use the weapons to killing somebody or beating somebody. That moment is we are demons. Mm. But in, in the spirit world, there's uh, so many allures of the spirits. You mm -hmm. see, the spirits is in the air, spirits is in the fire, spirits is in the water, the spirits is in the earth. Uh, even though you see <clears throat> in native traditions, they're called uh, the planar world, animal world, human world, mm -hmm. spirit world. So, <clears throat> uh, so, and that's the way I would believe too, because and how we be heavy and how we use the nature that makes us difference in the spirit world mm -hmm. and why weather changes why things happening because we destroyed the the territory of the spirits homes mm. of the spirits just because the you see the all the elements the homes of the spirit <laughs> from a buddhist perspective uh what is karma and how does this kind of cause and effect law of the universe work on, you know, for, for humanity. And, and of course we're, we're subject to the laws of karma, right? The karma, the seeds of the karma is our mind, the, the ground, the, the foundation of the karma is our mind. Hmm. It's a, our mind is a part of something as a virtuous thing, then the good karma, right? Anything rise with the, Selfishness, ignorance, jealousy, pride, and me, mm -hmm. me, me. All this is negative karma. So as you see, sometimes we sit in the sofa or your bed. You're thinking about our ways to somebody kill this politician or I wish he died. Yeah. Actually, you carry in bad karma. Yeah. Because you don't have guts, but you really want Mm -hmm. And you do nothing but you care the bad karma, you see? Yeah. Sometimes even you're driving, you hurt maybe rabbit or birds or some uh, animal in a road. You feel bad. You don't want to kill them. Right. Is is that? Was that, that animal's karma to that moment to die, you see what I'm talking yeah. about? Only what kind of karma you're developing is you go in that direction. Right. What Like, so, it, like, for example... If, it, if there's an accident, that's different, huh? right? Than 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 a premeditated, you know. If you're if you're driving down the street and and you and you hit a deer and you kill a deer, I mean, you most people are going to feel bad, but that's a different kind of karma than if you go out and you know are just killing deer because you want to see them die, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. What I'm saying is, you go in that and hurt by car to kill deer. You feel bad, even though maybe you can do prayers, you can right. really, somehow there's karma connected, but right, not right. a heavy karma connected. I see. But you invent to kill in deers, you buy blood, you get gun, then you get a hunter license, so you may be going to sneak you, who knows, people right. do things weird. So you're going to really shoot in this a beautiful animal, never harms nobody, just eating the grass, look mm -hmm. in the deer's eyes, then you just like cut the head and say, ah, a trophy and put it in right. the wall. It's like what you're doing is like you, somebody kill your family number and put it in the wall, say, hey, this nice trophy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, to me, it's just when some people show me that I will really feel sad. And one time this guy was hunter and he was showing me to his walls of all the trophies he killed. Yeah. And I was just crying and doing mantras. Mm. That's it. I didn't say you know bad either because he was so excited. <laughs> yeah. I don't want him to feel bad, but and I feel like think about these beautiful animals died. Yeah, and and I you know I I I was raised in a culture there was a lot of hunters and you know it's uh, it's a reflection of what's going on in them you know as much as it is what they're putting on the wall you know that that's mm -hmm. that's something that. Um, they're filling a void, you know, that they don't realize they have. I, that's, that's so I think about it. Um, but I, I understand exactly what you're saying. So there are, 
I, I understand there's so many prophecies from uh, Padasambhava. Uh, but what were what what were some of his more famous prophecies? And is COVID nineteen this virus that you know everything that's happening right now in the world is it part of those prophecies? Is it like a purification of the planet? If you really look and this. Uh, uh, um, COVID-19 is, you see that he, these, these illness don't take the size, doesn't matter rich, it doesn't matter famous, doesn't matter poor, everybody mm-hmm. get through the same way. So this teaches impermanence. What teaches mm-hmm. through this is, if you have abundance, I think it's very important to enjoy life, but share and do good things to benefit mm-hmm. something for future generations. Uh, and also, yeah. you don't have things, also you don't need to worry too much, then you can see like, a, oh wow, and so teaches us, uh, every, uh, everybody teaches us this impermanence. Right. So, right. maybe you see, uh, you're maybe rich as a person, but maybe you got die tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, before too late, it's very important to, to do something good because we think of the one day I will do something that is wasting <laughs> energy and thinking. That's right. We have to start some kind of project to benefit future generations. That's right. And then the act of starting, the act of doing, uh, mm-hmm. beginning that creates, a, I believe it creates a vortex. It creates this energy, you know, that the universe, it, it, is waiting for you to do that to do that thing that you love you know and when you do all these different elements you know really kind of conspire to work with you and and help you um and that's what people don't realize when they're putting it off for tomorrow you know even if you just got started today you know then tomorrow you're going to be that much further uh it's so important mm-hmm. i think you know especially right now exactly but um so i know that we we started to talk a little bit about this but I want, you know, I definitely want to ask you what, you know, what you would say to, to America and our leaders, you know, uh, 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 as far as like fixing this country and, and, and because it seems like, you know, more and more we're sinking into this duality and madness. Um, and, and so how do we wake America up? I think as you know, I say something and that's just in my voice, but, uh, I think uh, that everybody have to wake up. It's enough is enough to say, no, I'm Republican or Democrat. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter your de- Republican Democrat is, and this is one family, it's one country. Mm. If you, uh, if a Democrat people are doing very well, good things, then benefit for future generations. Right. Republicans doing something good, then benefit for future generations. It's enough is enough. It's I say it's if you are as a politician, then you have responsibility of the country, cities, state where you belong to. You represent who you are. Is your look in your state, look in your city. We the people have allowed these two parties to you know we've given we've given away our power in in a sense that. You know, we continue to allow them to fight and to to make everything about whose fault is this and who's right and who's not. Instead of why don't we make the improvements that we know we can make r- readily make, you know, and and put put them in people's lives and stop making it a political debate. You know, I mean, some basic things. And and this country isn't even the worst of it. You know, there are. Yeah, that's another discussion, but. <laughs> Thank you for your for your answer. It was very insightful. Um, so I have a, I have a question for you, and it's I've always mm-hmm. been so curious about this, and I don't know if you can talk about it or not. But you know, I it always struck me when when I when I learned about how Tibet monks were setting themselves on fire in in protest of uh, you know can why what like why were they doing that? Can, can you answer that? Uh, you see, it's not just only Tibetans. There's uh, many Falun Gong people as well. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people, and worldwide, we can talk about uh, and when the war in Vietnam, 
uh, and there's a lot of this. But uh, those people's motivation, I don't know the details behind, but the motivation is for for world peace, for free, yeah. for Tibetan. And that's what they call in, and they want to Dalai Lama come back to Tibet. Mm-hmm. So yes, I think that more than 150 people uh, in die that's that way. Wow. And their voice you can't forget. And uh, but uh, you see, I can't say that is bad because their motivation is for world peace. I ask this to to everyone who beams into the podcast and so i gotta ask you but um let's say you you were you were leaving on a spaceship and you bumped into a few aliens who were coming here to to live among us to live in, uh, among us humans um what were three things if you could pick three things quick things you would tell them that you if they said you know how can we how can we do this to the best of our ability? You know, you're, you're trying to make their life easier. What would you say to them? I said, okay, first you behave nicely, and also you have to learn in the culture, learn in mm. the language. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, <laughs> Simple. <laughs> um, with with China and America kind of at odds right now. You know, I know that. A lot of people believe like, okay, you know, the, the world wars are done. Do you think another world war is possible with China and America being in this kind of tense relationship? I don't know because uh, many years ago people asked me, oh, you know, America dealing with Iran or North Korea. I said that's American problem feature is not North Korea or Iran, it's China. Because I know the Chinese government hate America, and also you see Hollywood movies in the movie theater, the videos they're selling in the Chinese street, mm-hmm. <laughs> all copies. Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is, uh, I think as uh, what I'm saying is, uh, there's a big problem right now in between China and America. Yeah. But I think the both leaders they not stupid, so they are. Why? So I don't think it's, there's no. Uh, if you war, only lose situations, and only war brings war. War brings uh, hatred. War brings famine. War mm-hmm. brings uh, suffering. Anybody is uh, war, they lose. So actually, right. they lose. There are no winners. In so the war. if you're smart leader, then don't war. But maybe one stupid one. Maybe you never know shooting nuclear or some kind of missile to somebody, and there may be start a war. So I think it's a very difficult time in the world. And uh, I wish America and China really need is to sit together and table yeah. and communication. I mean, the, we could do so much respect. together. But the, we, mm-hmm. my God. Yeah, respect. It. And I think it's also America need more wear mm-hmm. and also what the one America and also respect mutually. Mm-hmm. And they all sit together to a torrents and communication and respect. I agree. That's right now they need. My God, I mean, it's everything. How can you not? They how, don't need the missiles. So no, <laughs> they don't. I mean, they they don't even need any more ways to make more money. They, I mean, they really just need to sit down and mm-hmm. and communicate about how to bring the two countries together. You know, and the fruits of that labor not just, will. Uh, you know, not just in the two countries whole world yeah so everybody's watching so you yeah. see i think it's a very very important to uh right now is need more wisely dealing with this and mm-hmm. uh, wisely respectfully because everything is a relative how you respect other they're the right. same way it's That's like right. you see um same things go so i hope they have torrents and communication and respect. Me too, man. Me to too. To talk, it's just. And the, the, then I think it's going to change. Yeah, I, I God, the president who who could really accomplish that. I mean, I don't understand how you how that's not top of the list. You know, it's like I mean, you're the leader of the. You know, whether you're the leader of China, whether you stop competing. And just start working together and, and watch the effect it will have on, on, on your people. I mean, that's what our leader's for. It's like, I don't know, it's, 
it amazes me how we elect the people we do. <laughs> yeah, that's why you see the small way is you have family. So think about if my husband and wife have an ego, like don't want to talk, then start problems. Yeah. But if you listen and talk, then everybody has problems. There's a ways to work on. That's right. So, you know, say, okay, maybe you husband and wife driving, and maybe a wife always complains of your husband's driving, then <laughs> wife driving. Okay. That's right. Maybe something so in the kitchen, maybe they have some problems then. Okay, you in the kitchen. You cook, yeah. Cook. You <laughs> ah, okay, today I'm going to cook, so, you know, you relax. Don't just come in the kitchen. That's you right. Know? It's I mean, simple. What I'm saying is you need this humble in communication. And right now what's going on is the ego. Like I have right. the biggest bomb. I'm stronger than that's you. Right. If you don't listen, I will fight with you. It's all that's ego. We don't need it. Yeah. We really need it. Who has a bigger bomb? Who cares? Really what the people need is spread now peace and just need a global harmony. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And you're absolutely yeah. right. You know, it's it's the ego, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, you can just think about you go to the grocery stores, uh, the sections of bread. Oh, I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want that. Oh, I'm gluten free. Oh, you know. I need organic. <laughs> you see, you go to the go to Yemen or Africa. They don't have bread. My God, <laughs> man. They don't have bread. I they mean, don't have choice. there's millions without <laughs> like they don't. Some of them don't have electricity. They don't even have a toilet. They don't. You know what I mean? Like we take so much for granted. Um, and, and you really know, I see lucky. We are lucky uh, to yeah. as Americans. That's why everybody wants to come America, to, to come yeah. to America and want to live America because these are the great countries. It's what we really need is we respect and push ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Respect and to share. Yeah, that sums it up. You know so well. Um, it is what we need right now. Um, that's why I'm talking to you. You know, and um, why I'm I'm excited to, to to get this message out lama and um so i wanted i wanted to ask you uh if you could um if you could do a, a tibetan throat chant that will kind of go out over this podcast and that you know will benefit and bless um sentient beings who are hearing it and 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 anyone else I don't know because I didn't do a long time, so <laughs> maybe, oh, okay. you're out of practice. So good, but I will, I will do uh, try. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Awesome. That was awesome. I'm going to like listen to that over and over. <laughs> um, that was so great. Thank you so much, Lama. I, I appreciate it. We got through um, all my questions. You know, I, I always ask my guests before they go, you know, if, mm -hmm. if you could um, share one bit of wisdom with the human race, what would it be? If you have happiness in your heart and peace in your home, I say, wow, he's a successful man and successful woman. It's very important to respect in ourselves, not a selfish way, but health-wise, thinking-wise, not a jealous and angry, because that only hurts ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it's a, what I want to say is you have happiness in your heart, peace in your home, and you have peace with others. And uh, do good things to yourself, do good things to others. That's it. Yeah. That's a, that's a success story Simple. right there, if I ever heard it. Exactly. One. If you have, I think you have that, indefinitely amazing person, you see. You're mm -hmm. all, you're happy, you have peace. What you need? Nothing. That's right. Okay? That's have right. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much, Lama. I appreciate it. Take oh, care. You're welcome.